So you want to be a streamer, do you? Maybe you just want to dip your toes in the water a little bit. Or maybe you're just really cramped for space and you just don't have enough room for two computers. Well, I got you covered. You're not going to want to miss this. So when you're streaming, you have to take the picture that's on your screen, somehow compress it and send it over to Twitch or YouTube or whatever, right? It's called encoding your stream. Now, there are three ways that you can encode your stream. You can use an Intel CPU. You can use a Ryzen CPU. Or you can use an NVIDIA graphics card. Um... You can't really use the name D graphics card. Don't even try. It's dog shit. Now, each of them have their own pros and cons, okay? This, you can use what's called QuickSync. It is a integrated graphics that's built into Intel CPUs. Only Intel CPUs have them. And what you can do is you can use the encoder inside of the chip to send it over to Twitch or whatever without an FPS hit. NVIDIA graphics card, same thing. This has its own encoder. That's not part of the... It's part of the GPU, but it's not part of the portion of the GPU that's rendering your game, okay? Third, you can just straight brute force it with a lot of CPU cores. You really need AMD ones for this. You'll see why later on in the video. So, moral of the story. I'm going to be testing every single type of encoding that's available to single PC streamers. We're not gonna be using any, any kind of double PC, no OBS NDI, no transferring a video over the network, not, none of that. We're strictly just talking about single PC today. I'm gonna take every style, stream it to a Twitch dummy account at 6,000 megabits a second, okay? Then I'm gonna download the VOD from Twitch re-upload it to you guys so you can see all of the quality differences of each style. I'm also going to have an FPS counter at 1080p and 1440p. So you're going to get data of every type of... You're going to get you're going to get data for everything pretty much. So a lot of people have been requesting this one. I apologize it took so long to come out, but here it is. Let's just get on with it. The first thing we're going to start off is the 10900K base numbers. So on the left, you're going to have a 1080p. On the right, you're going to have 1440p. So all we're trying to do right now is just establish a baseline of how much FPS we're going to have when nothing is going on in the background. So what you're going to notice here is I just picked this spot because I'm using the traffic lines on the road um to keep my character as consistent as possible between runs right so that's literally the only reason why i'm just running on the same traffic line in every single run okay so now we're trying to brute force it with x264 medium if you notice the cpu core temperature on the top left it's about 15 to 20 degrees hotter than it was in the base run that's because it's hitting all the cpu cores at once right now now we have an almost 60 to 70 fps drop here um over the baseline it's just this this the 10900k does not have enough cpu cores to handle the game and encode it to a stream at the same time that's a major weakness of an intel chip okay next up we're going to be doing quick sync here and this is probably going to be the best performer you can see there's really only like a 10 to 15 fps hit here but I'm not sure if you guys will be able to tell, but the quality, the quality to the viewer is significantly worse than X264. So while you might have a better gaming experience, the viewer is definitely going to have a worse viewing experience. Okay, last but not least, we're going to be checking out NVENC here. This is using the NVIDIA encoder on the graphics card. So you can see it's about 20 to 30 FPS hit, right? So a larger FPS hit than QuickSync, but the quality is much, much better. So 
if you're single PC streaming, this is probably going to be the, the best option. Like, the best of both worlds. I ended up getting killed here at the end because this game is dog shit and I didn't want to bother queuing again, but the point is still the same. So that's it for the 10900K conclusion for that one. If you want to just like have the most FPS possible, screw your viewers, I need to be as competitive as possible, you want to use Quick Sync. If you want kind of image quality and, you know, competitive ish FPS, NVENC. Don't use X264 on uh, 900 k it's too, it's just not enough cores, but let's go to the 5950X now where we have a lot more options of what we can get away with. All right, first up, the 5950X, we're just getting the baseline here. Uh, you know the drill, same as before, following the traffic lines. Um, don't worry about the CPU core temperature. Afterburner has a bug with this motherboard and on um, recording it properly, but I didn't want to like take it down for because then you just know some idiot on YouTube would be like, why did he take the CPU core temperature down? It, just, just don't worry about it. Ignore it. But look at the FPS. That's what you want to focus on here. All right. Now we're going to be doing X264 medium. Now, you're going to notice the exact same FPS loss, almost 60 to 70 FPS loss as the 10900K. Why is it that a 5950X with six more cores has the same FPS drop as a 10900K? Right? It, right? It doesn't make any sense, does it? Ah, I have an explanation. When you think of a 5950X, it's really, 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 really important that you think of it as two eight core CPUs that have to talk to each other. It's not a single 16 core CPU. It's advertised as a 16 core CPU, but it's, it, it, it doesn't work that way. Each eight core chiplets have to talk to each other, right? So what happens is the Windows scheduler gets insanely confused. It's like, oh, which, which CPU cores do I use for encoding? Which CPU cores do I use for the game? And it's just a clusterfuck of miscommunication, if you will, right? That's why 10 cores on a 10900K is still faster in gaming because it's 10 cores on one CPU, not two, <laughs> two eights. Do you know what I mean? So. Watch what I do next. Okay, this is a program called Process Lasso, okay? Now, what this program does is it lets you bind CPU cores to a certain app. So what I ended up doing was, this is the idea that I had. I am going to bind CPU 1 to 15, and the reason why there's 50 of them is because it counts um, the SMT hyper-threading, whatever you want to call it, it counts the SMT as indiv individual cores. So you select 16 of them, and you bind these ones to COD. Warzone, okay? You take the next 16 of them, and you bind them to OBS. So that way, the encoder is only going to be using these eight cores for your X264 medium. COD is only going to be using these cores to play the game. There's not going to be any weird miscommunication between these two chiplets. Again, you have to consider them as two separate CPUs, and you have to use them as such. You cannot consider it one CPU. Ah, uh, look at that. An instant 30 to 40 FPS back to us, and the quality of the stream has not changed. You essentially have a 5800X playing the game and a 5800X encoding the stream right now. That's kind of how you can think of it. So this is pretty much what kind of FPS 5800X owners can uh, expect. This solution here is going to be the best one if you want your viewers to have the best viewing quality. X264 is the best for viewing quality. And they say Alder Lake's not going to have Windows scheduling problems. Okay, up next we're going to be using NVENC on the 5950X. Um, nothing special to see here. The exact same FPS drop as the 10900K. 
um it looks like it's about 10 fps higher than doing the double eight process lasso so you could really just take your pick here if you want your viewers to have more quality go the double eight route if you want to have a little bit more fps but still good quality use the nvenc route right all right now for the grand finale by far the coolest setup but also the hardest to set up don't even bother trying this at home you need to be like a windows god to know how to configure all this stuff properly i'm, I'm not going to go into it that would be like an entire separate video on how to set that up properly but check this out okay so this is kind of the most complicated part of doing it this way the top slot is a 3090 the middle one is a 3060 uh just the smallest card that i had pretty much the evga 3060 and then down here is the Elgato Capture card. So what I got in the back here is I got the 3090 mirroring itself over to the Capture card. The second monitor is running off the 3060 over here, right? Now, so you can see OBS is capturing this monitor down here, okay? Now, you can see the 3060 has all the GPU load right now. The 3090 is just idling. Nothing is being used. So when I hit the record or stream button, only the 3060 is being loaded. That's it. The 3090 does not even see of, the 3090 doesn't even see what's going on right now. So that's what, that's the way we want to have it right now. Okay, so you can see here, we're streaming right now, and the video engine load is all on the 3060 here, with the GPU load taking care of OBS. GPU load of the 3090, well, I mean, it's, it's just the, the, the pre-lobby, but... No FPS loss whatsoever. The only reason why you can do that on a 5950X is because it has PCIe Gen 4. The top slot gets eight lanes of PCIe 4, which is the equivalent of 16 Gen 3 lanes. The 3060 in the second slot, eight lanes of Gen 4. The last slot, four lanes to the chipset. So you're pretty much maximizing what that platform is capable of as a whole. You can also do it on the 10980XE because that has like 44 lanes or whatever. I've done it on that one as well and it does work, but I wanted to see if it was gonna work on a consumer platform and it does. Again, don't try and set that up. There was, that took me like all day to, just don't, just don't. Anyway guys, if you appreciate the hard work, this took a long time to make, but if you do appreciate it, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff, like, share, subscribe. Um, comment down below what you think of all the testing today. And uh, I don't even know where we go from here, but stay tuned for the next one. Talk to you later.